This video is going to cover 17 through 22 on your Algebra, Keystone, Algebra 1 Keystone Review Packet. Starting with 17 and 18, we're going, to, we're going to add and subtract polynomials. Remember with adding polynomials, you can only combine like terms. With the addition, really the parentheses don't matter. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. I have 8x squared minus 4x minus 8. I'm going to rewrite the second polynomial right underneath that one, lining up the terms that are like. So plus 3x squared minus 7x minus 3. And I'm just adding these two together so I can just add each column now that I have them lined up. 8x squared plus 3x squared is 11x squared. You add the coefficients, keep the variable. A minus 4x plus a minus 7x. So those are both negative. I'm getting more negative. 4 plus 7 is 11, so it's a minus 11x. And then minus 8 and minus 3. Think about it as debt. You're, in, you're giving away $8 and you're giving away $3. So you gave away $11. Your answer then is 11x squared minus 11x minus 11. That's A. Now with the subtraction one, there's a little more work. Again, I prefer to rewrite it with the polynomials lined up. So I'm going to rewrite this first one. 9x squared plus 6x plus 4. Now the second one, I have to subtract that whole thing. Here's how I like to do this. I like to distribute it so that I can just add. So it's going to be a minus 3x squared, and then I can just add those two together. It's going to be a minus 2x, and it's going to be a minus 6. By distributing that minus sign in the beginning, now I can just add each column together. So 9x squared and negative 3x squared gives me a positive 6x squared. Positive 6x, take away 2x, gives me a positive 4x. Positive 4, take away 6, gives me a minus 2. I have more negatives here. And your final answer is 6x squared plus 4x, take away 2, or minus 2. Make sure you distribute that minus sign. Otherwise, you have to put it out here and you have to keep tapping it. So minus 3x squared, minus 2x, minus 6. I think it's easier if you distribute it in. 19, then, simplify these polynomials. What operation's happening here? Well, we have a binomial right next to a trinomial, so they're being multiplied. I like to distribute the first term first. So take x and multiply it by all three of the things that are in the second parentheses. So I would have x times 2x squared, which is 2x cubed, then x times 5x, so plus a, a 5, x squared, that I have x times 2, so that's plus 2x. Now, I already distributed the x to everything, so I'm done with that one. Move on to the 3. Take a positive 3 and distribute it. Positive 3 plus 2x squared is going to give me 6x squared. I'm going to write this down underneath the x squared term because those are like terms, and then I can combine them. So I would have plus 6x squared. Positive 3 times 5x is going to give me a plus 15x. And again, I'm lining up the terms that are like with each other. Plus 2 times plus 6 gives, I'm sorry, plus, positive 3 times a positive 2 gives me a positive 6. There's no constant, so I'll just tack this on at the end. Now I can just add these two columns together. So 2x cubed, there's no like terms with that, so I'm going to have just 2x cubed. 5x squared plus 6x squared gives me a plus 11x squared. 2x plus 15x gives me a plus 17x. And then the plus 6 is tacked on at the end. So your correct answer is A. So 17, 18, and 19 were all A's. 20, 21, and 22 then deal with factoring. So now we're starting with the answer, and we have to figure out what we multiplied to get there. So let's start with this first one. We have x to the fourth minus 1, and we have to factor completely. So x to the fourth minus 1, this is a difference of two squares. Hopefully you recognize that. x to the fourth is a perfect square, and 1 is a perfect square. If you don't recognize it, it may help you to write x to the fourth 
plus zero in the middle and then minus one or zero x squared in the middle because there's nothing there, okay? But this is a difference of two squares, so break it up. What multiplies to give you x to the fourth, x squared and x squared? What multiplies to give you one, one and one? Why is there no middle term? Because the signs are opposite. Now, if you circled A, you are correct in the sense that that is a factorization, but it's not factored completely. Look at this answer. You can keep going with something. You have another difference of two squares. You see, this is a sum of two squares. That's, that's not really a thing that can't factor farther. But the minus a perfect square can. So we're going to keep this x squared plus 1. That's not changing. This factors again, and it factors just like this first one did. So it factors into two binomials. What multiplies to give you x squared? x and x. What multiplies to give you 1? 1 and 1. Why did the middle term disappear? Because they're opposite signs. The correct answer for the complete factorization is B. So A is not far enough. D is trying to go too far. Um, and C, when you multiply this out, you would not get a 0x squared or no middle term. This would get you a minus x cubed and a plus x. If you didn't remember how to factor this on the test, what you could do is multiply your options out and see which one gets you back to here. It would take a little more time, but it is an option. Great, let's try the next one. Factor the following expression completely. We have x squared minus 10x plus 25. Okay, remember with factoring, the first step is to look for a GCF. Is there a greatest common factor here that can come out? No. They don't all have X's. They don't all have 5. So there's no GCF here. The next thing then is to kind of try, try to think how you can break it up. What multiplies to give you X squared? X and X. So the first term leads to the first spots. Now, the last spots, you have to think, what multiplies to give me the last term, which is 25? Those same two numbers have to add to give me a negative 10. So they multiply to give you the last term. They add to give you the middle term. Think about the factors of 25. We have 5 and 5 and 1 and 25. Well, 5 and 5 will multiply to give me 25. Can 5 and 5 add to give you a negative 10. Almost, right? They both have to be negative. So what does that tell you about your factorization? It's x minus 5 times x minus 5. You can write that neater and cleaner by doing x minus 5 squared on the outside. Your correct answer then is D. And the last factoring problem here, when the expression x squared minus 3x minus 18 is factored completely, which one, which is one of its factors? I would ignore the options for now and I would just factor the problem. So let's just ignore those and pull this problem down here and do what we did on the last problem. Once you have it factored, you can choose which one you see in A through D. So break it up. We look for a GCF. There's no GCF. Break it up. What multiplies to give me x squared? x and x. Now think about what multiplies to give you a negative 18, but adds to give you a negative 3. So because I'm multiplying to get a negative, I know it's a positive and a negative. I'm going to have one of each sign. 6 and 3 multiply to give me 18. 9 and 2 multiply to give me 18. Ooh, but 6 and 3 can get me a 3. So it's going to be 6 and 3. I just have to figure out the signs now. Well, I want to end up with a negative 3, so I need more negatives. That means the 6 is negative. And this works here, too. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Negative 6 times 3, I'm sorry, negative 6 plus 3 is a minus 3. So it's x minus 6, x plus 3. Now that you have the factorization, look at your options. Which one is a factor? x minus 2, no. x minus 3, no, it has to be the plus 3. B is the correct answer here. A good testing strategy is to do the work and, sh and try the problem without looking at the options first. Otherwise, you might look at these and talk yourself into one that is incorrect. So factor it first and then see what you have. 
you have any questions still after watching this video, please see your teacher.